Yes, I must say good morning, one and all. And I want to welcome all my viewers. I want to welcome members of Greater Portmo Tabernacle, Spanish Town Tabernacle, and whosoever you are, Kingston Tabernacle, I just want to say welcome to our live streaming. Today is a wonderful day, another day that God has given us, which we can give Him thanks, give Him praise, and give Him glory. You know, we could have died in our sleep, but God has seen it fit to give us another chance to live for Him. And so today, as you know, is our time when we spend this moment with God as we pray and spend some time in His Word. But before I go any further, let me just take a time out to just pray a short prayer as we proceed. Father, we thank you for this moment. I pray that, Lord, you will bless us as we take this time out, O oh God, to seek you and to look into your words. Lord, have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, whenever we get these moments, we have to take, take it very seriously because many may not have this chance to even give God thanks anymore because they are in their grave. And while they are in their grave, you know, there is no opportunity to move your mouth again. But we, while we are alive, the Bible said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Now today, I want to take a little time out and I want to look in the word of God. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, you can just go there with me to St. Matthew, chapter 16 and verse 13. And it says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? Verse 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now just jump with me a little bit and go down to verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Now, in looking in this chapter of St. Matthew chapter 16, you would have observed something that has taken place. The Apostle Peter, one who persons at times call one of the inner circle disciple, he did a wonderful proclamation. He made a statement in the earlier part of this chapter, in the first verses that we read, you would have realized after Jesus asked, whom do, you, do men say I am? Peter was the only one who gave the correct answer. Some, they say, well, he was John the Baptist. Some say he was Elijah. Some say he was Jeremiah. But something happened during that moment. Peter gave an answer that Jesus had to commend him. He said, Blessed art thou, 
bar Jonas, because flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you, which is in heaven. Peter told Jesus, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, this answer did not come from flesh. It did not come from his mother. It did not come from his father. It did not come from someone on the street. But it was revealed by the Father which is in heaven. And so Jesus was very pleased at the same. And so he commended Peter in a very wonderful way. I want to use for a topic this morning. The God influence. The God influence. Now, if you, uh, if you observe carefully, you would have realized that Peter was influenced by the Father which is in heaven. As he spoke these words, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus was very pleased with this saying. He said, Thou art Peter. And he said, Upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Upon this confession that Peter made, he built his church. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this statement is a very crucial statement right now in our faith as Christians. Because Jesus is the cornerstone and is the rock of our salvation. But the sad part of it was that not long from that in the same chapter, you would have observed that Jesus began to reveal to his disciples that he's going to suffer. He's going to be killed and he's going to be, he's going to be resurrected. Now, on hearing this, Peter, on hearing this, began to rebuke Jesus. Because, look, look at it now, carefully. In, in Peter's mind, maybe he thought that he was doing a good thing. He said, Lord, this shall not happen to you. This shall not happen. But guess what happened? Jesus gave Peter a very strong rebuke. Jesus said to Peter, I get thee behind me, Satan. I rebuke thee, for thou savest not the things of God, but the things of men. Now, looking at it carefully now, you would have realized that Peter, at first, he was speaking under the influence of the Father. Because what he said first, thou art the Christ, it was revealed unto him by the Father. But we see not long from that, in the same chapter, he was rebuked by Jesus Christ. Now, we can learn something from this. Whenever we are in this life, it can show that it doesn't matter what position you are in, it doesn't matter what good you have done, there is a chance that you can be influenced by Satan, and there is a chance that you can be influenced by God. Now, Peter, not long ago, he was influenced by the Father to make such a proclamation that please God, but not long from that, he was rebuked by Jesus Christ. You see, as Christians, as ministers, whoever we are, we have to guard ourselves. We have to put on the old armor of God that we can quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Because this moment, we can please God, but if we are not careful, we can be used by Satan to do his will. If we healed ourselves to God, God is going to influence us to do his will. But if we healed ourselves to Satan, Satan is going to influence us to do his will. Just like Peter. Peter was in a position at first, if you notice, where he healed himself in such a way that the Father in heaven could have revealed unto him that Jesus was the Christ. And he is the son of the living God. But we see something happen that not long from that, the same Peter was influenced to speak against Christ. Because if you notice, you know, what Peter said, you know, it was a violation of the will of God. Because Peter was saying that Christ, no, it is not going to happen to you. When Christ said that he's going to be crucified, when Christ said he's going to die and resurrect, Peter was opposing Christ. Now look at it now. Jesus came to hurt. He did not come here to sit down and eat ice cream and watch TV and live a long life and hurt 
and have family and to set up a kingdom on earth. But Jesus came to earth to fulfill the plan of the Father, to die and to set us free from our sins. He came to die to bring salvation to humanity. But Peter did not see the direct and the divine will of God. Peter was opposing God's will because what Peter was doing, you know, he was saying that, no, what you're saying, Jesus, it will not happen. You're not going to be crucified. No, it's not going to happen. But that is a strict violation. It was a strong violation that Jesus Christ had to rebuke Peter in such a very strong way. He said, I rebuke you because thou savorest not the things of God, but the things of man. Because in Peter's statement, you would have realized that it was a self-preservation statement. He was trying to say that Jesus is not going to die. But look here, we have to take consideration as Christians and as humans that sometimes always are not the ways of God. Now today, remember I'm talking about the God's influence. I'm talking about God's influence. Now look at it now. Peter was not the only one who was influenced to go against God's will. Now we also see in the book of Genesis, the devil came in the form of a servant and the devil came to Eve. Now when the devil came to Eve, we saw that Eve healed to the devil. But not only that, we saw that the devil worked through Eve and he was able to reach Adam. The devil reached Adam by influence Eve, by influencing Eve, and we saw that Adam healed to the temptation. And so what am I saying? As Christians, as followers of Christ, we have to be aware that the devil is able to influence us, just as how God is able to influence us. There's a statement that says that a chain is no stronger than its weakest link. You see, whenever a person allow a weak spot to be in their life, don't matter how strong they are as a Christian, if they give the devil one chance, the devil can manipulate that chance and cause that person to become sinful, to become carnal, and to live a life that is contrary unto God. We see that the devil worked through Eve to reach Adam. And we saw that Adam fell and healed to the temptation. And that was not the only instant. There was another instant also in the life of Job. We saw when Job was suffering, he was going through his tribulation. And we saw it was a moment when source began to appear on Job. And Job's wife came unto him and said, Do you retain your integrity? Curse God and die. And we saw that the devil was trying to use Job's wife to get to Job. There's a statement that says, you know, if you cannot catch Harry, you catch him short. You see, if the devil cannot get you, sometimes the devil might come to your husband. The devil might come to your wife. The devil might use your daughter. The devil might use persons who are close to you to get you down, to distract you from following the will of God. Because sometimes we may be strong, but the persons around us may be weak. And so the devil might use those opportunities to reach us and to try to distract us from doing God's will. And so we have to be on the double watch. We have to have on the whole armor. We have to watch out, be vigilant, for the, the devil is as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so we cannot be careless, because if we leave ourselves careless, the devil will try to use our weakness to get to us. And the weakness may be a family member, as I said, and anybody whom he can use. We saw in the case of Adam, the devil used Eve to get to Adam. And we saw that the devil was trying to use Job's wife to get to Job. And we saw that the devil was trying to use Peter to get to Jesus. And so we have to be careful as Christians. 
Now, the influences that we have in our life is very serious. And if we are not careful, we can be influenced by Satan to do his will. But you know the good thing about it? Just as how the devil wants to influence us, much more God wants to influence us. And the influence that God has is stronger than the influence that the devil has. But the truth is, if we heal to the devil, we will not be able to experience the influence that God intend for our life. Now, let us look at a couple more examples of how God influence. We saw how the devil can influence people to work and to sin and to get people off track. But what about God? God, we see, we can see in different instances that God can influence people. Now, look at this now carefully. Look at an example like a man called Jonah. We saw in the life, in the book of Jonah, God spoke to Jonah, but Jonah, in his own ways, decided that he's not going to obey God. But God did not leave it like that. Look at, the, look at it. God sent, the Bible said, a strong wind as Jonah was trying to escape and to run away from what God told him to do. But God sent forth a strong wind. Now look at this carefully now. There are many ways in which God can influence our life. God can influence our life through his voice, but not just his voice, but also through circumstance. Now look at it now carefully now. Jonah was on a ship. But in order for God to get Jonah to obey him, God had to send a strong storm. When he sent the storm, Jonah was cast into the sea. And it was there and then you realize that the storm stopped. What is that saying? God uses that circumstance to actually work in Jonah's life. And we saw Jonah went into the belly of the whale. And when Jonah went into the belly of the whale, Jonah went down into the sea. But there and then, God uses that circumstance to actually influence Jonah. And what did Jonah do? Jonah repented in the belly of the whale. So we see there are situations sometimes that God uses in order to influence us so that we will obey his voice. Now, sometimes in our life, as we live, we may wonder why God allows certain things to happen. We may not see the reason, and we may not know the reason, but God, in his divine wisdom, can influence us so that we can change our ways, change our behavior, change the way we live through circumstances. Sometimes, even in life, a person may want to become a better Christian or a wiser Christian, but as the Bible said, experience teacher wisdom. If you pray and say, God, Lord, I'm asking you for wisdom, then look at it now carefully. There is a possibility that God may use some experience that you did not plan to experience in order for you to develop some amount of wisdom. If you ask God to help you to develop patience, God, there is a possibility that God may allow you to go through a certain series of tribulation. So God can use different circumstances and different ways to influence us so that our life can become better. Just as how the devil is busy influencing people to make certain decisions and to act certain way contrary to God's will, is the same way God is working to influence our life so that our life can become better. Now, as I come down to a close, I want to look at our current situation, COVID-19. The question is, is there any good that can come out of COVID-19? Is there any way that God can influence us through this pandemic? Is there any way? Now, look at it now. Sometimes a preacher may preach until their mouth is dry. A preacher may call sinners. People may preach and do all sorts of things, beseeching, begging, 
Some may not listen. Some may go about their business. But you know what happened? In order for God to influence us, God may allow circumstances sometimes to reach us. Because if you fail to listen to the still small voice, you may listen to another voice. Or God may use another way to reach you. Now, guess what now? Look at this COVID-19. If persons receive Jesus during this time, as a result of COVID-19, then guess what? There would be a great advantage for God. Because who to tell, maybe if COVID-19 had not turned up, many would never remember God. So if God have to allow in COVID-19 to come so that many can be saved, it would have worth it that God allowed it to happen. And so what am I saying? There are different ways in which God can influence his people. Just as how the devil is working hard to influence people, I want to tell you, God is also working hard to influence his people. And as I close, I want to ask a few questions. Who is influencing you? Which influence are you following? Are you following the influence that comes from God? Or you are following the influence that comes from Satan? How do you behave in your family? Do you follow the influence of God in your family? How do you treat your wife? How do you treat your husband? How do you treat your children? How do you behave in school? How do you behave when nobody's watching you? Are you under the influence of God? Or are you under the influence of Satan? What is influencing you? Are you influenced by J. Ray and Neville? Are you in, are you influenced by God? What is your influence? What is behind you? What caused you to speak the way you speak? What caused you to act the way you act? What caused you to behave the way you behave? Today, I am talking about the God's influence. This is the influence that I am encouraging today. That we healed to the influence of God. It is said by research that those who spend at least two times or more, I think it's about two times or more, in the word of God per week, their lives are better off spiritually. It would have shown that in that one of the source of influence for God would be the word of God. And also there are many other sources, prayer, gospel music, things that edify. These things are ways in which we can be influenced by God. And so if we heal ourselves to the things of God, we're going to realize the more we heal ourselves to the things of God is the more we will become spiritually mature, is the more we will become productive, is the more we will experience what God has in store for us. The more we heal ourselves to the works of Satan is the more we will become corrupt. If you are not careful, man might end up selling their soul who will sell them soul might end up do giant deliverance and all sorts of things as they heal their self to Satan. And let me say this in closing. Just as how a person can heal themselves to the influence of God and they can become deeper with God. You can become stronger and stronger with God. If you heal yourself to Satan, you can become deeper and deeper and deeper the Bible even speaks of legions. A person can be possessed with so many devils, up to over 400 devils. So if we're not careful, if you heal yourself to the influence of Satan, you can become so influenced that you have nothing to do with the things of God. And so today in closing, I just want to say, let us heal ourselves to God and allow God to break us, melt us, mold us, and fashion us that we will bring glory and honor unto his name. God bless you today as we go, as I go into a time of prayer at this moment. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment, O oh God. 
Lord, we are happy that even though the devil is busy influencing people to kill, to steal, and to destroy, we are happy that you are also busy influencing people to work and to do your will. Precious Savior, I ask that today you will reach out and touch us in this world, God. We pray that, Lord, you will help us to heal to the influence that come forth from you and not to heal to the influence that come from Satan. Lord, for many years, some of us may be living under the influence of Satan. Some of us may be stealing for years, robbing for years, working hobia for years, working witchcraft for years, doing all sorts of deliverance and all sorts of evil works of darkness. But I pray that, O oh God of heaven, that today it will be a wake-up call. That we will no longer heal to the works of Satan. That we will no longer give our members to, the, to Satan to use them. But Lord God of heaven, help us today. That we will heal to the influence that come forth from God. Help us dear God to remember that we only have one life to live. And after death comes the judgment. Lord, help us this moment that we will take this opportunity, O oh God, to humble ourselves and pray and to seek your face. Help us, dear God, that we will not take it, O oh God, as a joke when we hear people preaching the gospel, when we hear a gospel song, when we are on the JUTC bus and we hear people preaching and doing your will. Help us not to take these things lightly. Because we know that one day we are going to give account of the life that we live in this body. I pray that you will reach out and touch those who, oh God, are struggling in between two opinions. Whether or not they should give their life to you. We ask that God you will touch them today. That they will fully surrender and heal to the influence that come forth from God. I pray for those, oh God who are suffering from COVID-19. Some of us, some of them, oh God, they may not even know that they have, oh God, the virus. We pray that God, those who are suffering, that you will help them to realize that as they suffer, that they should not just suffer, but they should take it as an opportunity to give their life unto you if they have not yet done so. We pray that you will reach out to, to those who are ministering your word that they will minister your word in season and out of season. That they will not take it for granted, O oh God, even though they may be limited to go out and to do as they normally do, but help them to use this opportunity to spread your word. We pray, God, for a revival to break out in Jamaica, that man and woman will cry out, God, save my soul from sin and from this wretched life. We pray, O oh God of heaven, that you will move from Maran Point to Negril Point, and that you will touch man and woman, boy and girl, obia workers, witchcraft workers, people who are dwelling under the influence of Satan, people who are wrapped up and tangled up under the influence of Satan. We pray that God you will intervene in your lives today. We pray for a turnaround in their lives. We pray for a transformation in Jamaica. We pray for a wake-up call for those who are slumbering in sin. We pray for those who, oh God, are ignoring and neglecting the voice of God. We pray for a transformation. We pray, oh God, that will reach out and touch people today. That they will know that there is a true and living God among us. We pray for those who don't have, oh God, financially. That you will also reach out to them in this time and provide for them. We pray for those who are emotionally discouraged. That you will bring forth, oh God, restoration to them. We pray for those who are depressed. That God, you will give them hope. We pray, oh God, for those who are weak in heart. That you will strengthen their heart. We pray that today, God, it will be a day in which people will be touched 
in which hearts will be changed, in which souls will be saved, in which those who are discouraged will be encouraged. We pray, O oh God, today that your Holy Spirit will move upon the life of your people in Jamaica, that people will experience a new touch. Lord, we welcome your presence among us, O oh God, as Christians, that as we go out, O oh God, and as we keep these morning devotions, that we will be influenced by your Holy Spirit to reach people who may never go to church, to reach those who, who may be in their hospitals who probably cannot find the opportunity to go to a building. We pray that, Lord, you will move among us and use us to the glory and honor of your name. We commit, O oh God, the land of Jamaica and all other countries before you, that, God, you will work upon our behalf. We pray that something good will happen today, that hearts will be changed, and that minds will be renewed. Lord, we give you thanks today, and we give you glory and honor, and we give you praise, O oh God, even at this moment, in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you for live streaming with us, and I thank you for spending, spending this moment with us. And um, tomorrow, we will be having Deacon Kemoy Wright, who will be coming also under the influence of God to continue his work and to share his word and to do his will. Stay tuned as we continue to lift up the great and mighty name of Jesus and as we seek to dwell under his influence and to reject and renounce the influence of Satan. God bless you today. Have a good and godly day. And don't forget to read your Bible and pray. God bless you.